Hello YouTube and welcome to the comic book channel. It's nice to say. <laughs> uh, either way, today we're going to be reviewing issue number one of Aquaman Jabberjaw special number one. I don't really know the exact title of this. Uh, either way, we all know it's Aquaman and Jabberjaw. Um, so, first impressions. This cover is awesome. Uh, DC has definitely been, I won't say knocking, well, <laughs> they've had some, a few awesome covers here and there. Um, that Batgirl cover was amazing. The next Batgirl cover coming up is amazing. The Wonder Woman covers have been amazing, and this is amazing. Um, this is a really nice cover. I really like this a lot. This was the only reason I even wanted to pick this up, to tell you the truth, um, was for the cover. Um, I'm not too big a fan of the DC Hanna-Barbera crossovers. They're a little cheesy to me. I don't really see a point. Um, and, you know, some of the ones that everybody talked about loving so much, like the Batman Elmer Fudd, like, I just wasn't into it. I thought it was stupid, to tell you the truth. Um, but to each their own. Uh, we're going to judge this one on its own merit, and uh, that's what we're doing today is reviewing Aquaman Jabberjaw 1. Um, so again, cover A+. Plus. That's an awesome cover. Uh, even the regular A cover looks great too, so they definitely get a pass on that for the cover. Um, and then, so the story inside, it's like, and I read this other places, it's like they kind of have a choice with these. They can either go super silly and like absurd or very serious with these crossovers. Those are like their only two choices because it's just like, it's weird subject material to bring, you know, to cross these two worlds together. Uh, now, something like this, even though we're in the more absurd territory, works a little bit better because we're, even though, you know, Jabberjaw and something like that is very cartoony, uh, Aquaman is still a guy talking to fish. So you can kind of, uh, you know, cross the streams there a little bit um, without it being too... Uh, Weird is not the word, because it's definitely weird, but uh, without it being too absurd, I guess. I, I don't I don't know the word that I want to say for that. But um, anyways, so to jump into this book right away, you open it up, and it is the opening to Jaws. It's the same thing. Amnesty uh, Bay, I think they said it was in this book. Uh, there's a girl, you know, out swimming. There's a giant shark. She jumps out of the water, all that. There's a... Um, I don't know what it is, a, sh a cop or something the next day who says the mayor is telling her that she's got to get this cleaned up, you know, all these shark sightings, uh, something needs to be done, you know, because all the fishers are coming, the beach is about to open, this, the season's happening, you know, whatever it is, same, same, same deal as Jaws. Um, so she goes to Aquaman, she's talking to Aquaman, she says, is there anything you can do? You know, and of course, uh, Aquaman is like, yeah, I can I can take care of that. I'll go talk to them. You know, she's like, well, you got, I, I can, you know, you probably got about 24 hours because there's a bounty on, on this giant shark and, and all this. And as they're sitting there talking, you know, uh, Jabberjaw, you know, just appears like very slowly uh, in the window in front of them or on the side of them. And, and that is the, the best moment in the comic that. That panel is amazing. I really like that. Um, he's just kind of floating by them, and, and that's really humorous. Um, they did it really well. Uh, so from there, um, <clears throat> Aquaman and Jabberjaw meet, and uh, you know, Jabberjaw kind of explains to him what he's doing there, uh, which he doesn't really know. He just knows he was on tour with his band, the Neptunes, and. He got ditched somehow, and, and we learned that Jabberjaw's from, you know, the future, and uh, he idolized Aquaman because he had, like, a cartoon show, and this and that. Um, <clears throat> so from there, uh, Aquaman and Jabberjaw find, you know, all these giant crazy sharks who are, who are there to kill everyone. And they're like, what the heck is going on? Aquaman tries talking to him, all this. They find a portal. They go through the portal. It's like a time portal. Takes them back to Jabberjaw's time. Um, where, you know, a, a good amount of stuff happens. But, uh, you know, to save all that, uh, 
basically they find out that there's a guy there who's sending um you know sharks back in the past to kind of change things around uh because there's political ramifications where you know uh the fish and the people need to not be equal for for whatever reason you know in his estimation or whatever um and that's why he's been sending them back that's why jabberjaw you know got sent there or whatever um and you know it's just uh just kind of silly fun uh aquaman you know figures out uh i mean I, i'm pretty sure i'm missing something in there i can't remember exactly what what happened from there to the next point now but either way uh aquaman you know has got to go back to to his you know current time and all that and, um so there's a little nod to uh to aquaman using some equipment there you know where he can talk to the the fish and stuff like that uh where he helps the singer of the band um who is a human um use that technology to to speak to the fish so i guess he like writes some song lyrics and using that and, and teaches them to the singer of the band the singer of the band uses those and all the fish are like really happy they're like yeah we love you best band ever type of thing um and then aquaman goes back and, and everything's good in his time again so um so that's the rundown of the book. Uh, and then, you know, my thoughts on that are, it was, it was pretty good fun. Uh, there was definitely a, like a lull in the middle, um, that could have been spruced up a little bit. Like, um, but I understand, you know, working with the material that we were working with, you just kind of had to have like that linear story to tell, um, and necessarily see a need for this at all, but it was fun. Um, so I'll give it that, like it, it definitely, you know, it's a good story and it was fun and, and I could see why they did it. Um, this one made a lot more sense than some of the other ones uh, did to me, so so I'll give it that. Um, but yeah, it was a fun book, it had great artwork, the writing was pretty good. Um, so you know, I would say like uh, from 1 to 10, like I'd probably give it like a good 6. Um, definitely wasn't bad little better than average um you know it's hard for me to judge a dc book because i'm not the biggest dc fan whenever it comes to you know any character except for wonder woman or uh, swamp thing or animal man <laughs> batgirl those are really the only ones that i care about um so it's easier for me to give a pass and i, I think i hold them a little bit harder than i do image or marvel or you know some of the independents and stuff like that but uh but this was good, so it was a good book, um, it was good fun, like I said the artwork was great, uh, so I'd give it like a good six. Um, and I, I do think you should check it out, it's it's fun, uh, you know, give it a shot, it'd be just one a fun book to read, nothing too serious. Now, uh, if they try to make like a mini series or something out of it, or or something like that, like I'm, I'm not too sure, but if it's just this one shot, um, that would be pretty cool. So. So those are my thoughts on Aquaman Jabberjaw number one. Uh, please let me know in the comments below if you read it, if you picked up a copy, and what you thought about it. Um, if you agree or disagree with my thoughts on it. And please remember to subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And please like this video and leave a comment. Um, really like talking to you guys in the comments below about uh, you know your thoughts on things, uh, comic book related and stuff like that. So please please leave one and let's start a conversation. So thank you guys so much and have a good night. I'll see you tomorrow.